Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I know it's been a while. I've been really, really busy. I had to get a job because this whole YouTube thing isn't working out quite as well as I was hoping it would. But you shouldn't worry about it too much. I'm hoping it doesn't interfere with my uploading speed too much. And also, I think the extra money might help with making higher quality weapons and stuff. I don't really know. At this point, it's a little too early for me to tell. I guess we'll just have to see. Um, here's that home defense crossbow that I talked about in the PVC pipe bow video. I personally think it came out really, really well. The body is made of mostly oak, so it's super strong. The limbs are made of fiberglass. These are some pulley wheels from... I think a laundry line this is just some paracord but i think it looks really nice especially after all of the staining that i did so before we start the build video i gotta warn you guys um i don't know if you've realized this from watching my other videos but when you see me building a weapon in a video i haven't built one beforehand to get a proof of concept and then gone and built one for the video. When you see me building a weapon in a video, that's the very first time that I've ever built it. So that's partially why this one took so long because of all the trial and error that I had to go through. Um, it was it was largely due uh, to you know getting a job and stuff, but figuring out how to actually get this thing to work was a really big part of it. So what I'm trying to explain to you, I guess, is these supports right here for a really good portion of the video come out to about right here and they've got like this hole in them right here. Um, just ignore that because initially when I was making this thing, I wanted to make the limbs out of PVC to make it a lot easier for you guys. But after uh, after cocking it back, the PVC limbs ended up just um, deforming and they broke and it really just didn't work. So I ended up having to make them out of uh, fiberglass. So yeah, all you have to remember is that these supports come out two and a quarter inches. Um, don't pay attention to the little ring right there and how far they come out before. So here's just a few options for the basic frame of the gun. We got the bullpup design. It's awesome for close quarters combat. It's got great balance because the handle is pretty much directly in the middle and then the grip on the front of it makes it really really easy to direct the front of the gun so it's ideal for like hallways and indoor applications. Then we got the pistol grip design. As you can see there's no stock. The handle is pretty much all the way to the back of the weapon and then the front grip is about a third of the way to the front of the weapon. Again another ideal weapon for indoor applications like home defense. It's more maneuverable than the bullpup design or the standard design except it's less accurate than either of them because like I said it doesn't have a stock. Quick side note this will be the easiest one to make because the trigger mechanism would be a lot more simple than these two. And then we got the standard frame. It's got both grips at about thirds. It's got a stock and it's extended. The length of it means that it's going to be more accurate and you can put longer limbs on it for more power except that'll also make it the least maneuverable out of all three of the designs. So this is more of an outdoorsy kind of frame. Now I didn't do these drawings proportionately correct to each other. This is the biggest one. These two are very similar, but this one is just very slightly smaller than this one. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to go with the pistol grip design for this build. So to start off, we got a couple of 5.5 by half by 36 inch oak boards and a couple of 2.5 by quarter inch by 36 inch poplar boards. I got the frame design drawn out on paper and I'm just going to cut it out. I'll give you measurements for this but not templates. If you're a fan of my videos at all you know I promote creators not copycats. So from the tip to the back here is 20 inches. It's two inches wide and the notch here dips down a quarter of an inch. Here's another perk to the pistol grip design that I totally planned for and didn't just discover right now. If I do this the right way I actually might be able to do the whole frame out of just one of these oak boards instead of having to use both of them. I got both halves of the frame drawn out in sharpie and I'm gonna do all the long cut with my jigsaw and then I'm gonna cut out the notches with my Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel and probably the angle grinder a little bit too. I got both halves cut out but since the angle thing on my jigsaw is all messed up they always come out really different from each other. So what I'm gonna do is line them up and clamp them together with some C clamps and then I'm gonna use a band of sandpaper and sand away at it until they're both pretty much identical. Once you got both pieces pretty identical then we're gonna cut the notch out. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to take my drill with a quarter inch bit and I'm going to drill through there and once the drill bits cleared out what I would have to be normally cutting out with my Dremel tool then I'll just use the Dremel tool to clean up whatever's left and if that made no sense this is what I meant I drilled through it now I'm going to take the Dremel tool and I lost my voice overnight hopefully you can deal with this sexiness 
after drilling through it, I did a majority of the shaping with the cutoff wheel and this little thing that I don't know the name of. Now I'll finish off what's left with this sandpaper belt. And there you go, everything's nice and rounded out. There's no sharp edges that are gonna mess up the bow string unnecessarily. Here's the trigger, which is also basically the entire trigger mechanism. I'm gonna cut it out of the poplar board that I showed you in the beginning. And the mechanism itself is simpler than most things on Earth. Just drill the hole right here, put a bolt through it. Now you pull the string back here, drop it into this little notch, and when you're ready to fire, you pull the trigger. This thing pushes the string out from the notch and it fires. Now this is a cross section. It's not gonna look like this when it's finished. It's gonna have the other half on it like this. The finished mechanism will work like this. Now take that piece of paper that we used as a stencil for the frame and lay it back down on it and we're going to use it to trace out the full range of motion of the trigger and the trigger mechanism. That means start at the point furthest forward and make your mark at the front of the trigger and then pull it all the way back as far as you want it to go and then make your mark at the back of the trigger. Alright, here's what I got. Now I'm going to cut these lines and use these halves as templates to trace out onto the poplar boards to cut out the spacers. And I almost forgot, right before you trace this out, take your pen make a little mark a quarter inch below the top of here and a quarter inch below the top of here and now instead of lining it up like this now you're gonna line it up like this and same on the other side too now that you got it like this now you trace it out you don't have to do that on the back here though you can just trace it out how it is once all the pieces are cut out slap some glue on them and start putting the whole thing together got it all glued together but it's far from perfect so I'm gonna use my brand new set of files and I'm gonna fix up the edge on it. And I'll probably use some sandpaper too. Once I got the edges all leveled, I started going away at it with the file. And at this point, it's really just a matter of preference. It's just whatever's most comfortable to you, just shape it to be that shape. Whatever you like, just go with that. There's really no right way or wrong way as long as it's good for you. I got all the shaping and the rough sanding finished on the handle and it is feeling really good. Now on the underbelly, I'm just going to use this thing because it's a really long flat plane and I'm going to level out these ridges. Remember when I told you to cut a quarter inch off the top of the spacer and you're like, what the heck? This is what it was for. Now it's the track for the bolt. So I got this three quarter inch oak board. This is actually the exact same board that I used to cut the handle out for my Krieg's Buzz Axe that I made for Halloween, but we're just gonna use the rest of it. I'll put a link for the build video for this at the end of this video. This board is about nine inches wide. Now I'll make a mark two inches from the end here and two inches from the end here. Also put a mark at the middle point at four and a half inches. Now we make a three inch line from that center point. Now I'll turn it into a T with this arm going one inch and this arm going one inch and then draw lines from the ends of the T to the marks that we made earlier. And then draw this rectangle here. It's just under an inch and a quarter wide and it's two and a quarter inches long. Now we gotta cut this rectangle out uh, with the jigsaw but I'm gonna use the hole saw to start it out with just to make it a little more easy because obviously you can't take a 90 degree turn with a jigsaw. So I'm gonna go through it with the hole saw first. And now I just take the jigsaw and cut along on this line. Now that we got that cut out, we're gonna take the gun looking portion of the crossbow and see if it fits. Nope, it doesn't. Perfect. Now take the jigsaw and cut along this line. Now on the gun thing, you are going to make two little marks right here and right here, 11 inches from the end of the gun. And then you're gonna take your file that is the same width as this thing, and you're gonna file away right here until this can fit onto this thing. You do the filing on both sides. You do the filing on both sides to make it even. All right, so classic rookie building mistake. I cut the wood with the grains running this way instead of this way. So now spots like this are really likely to break. And the answer to that problem is batarangs. Not really, I just kind of cut these out of some quarter inch oak and I'm just going to glue them onto there with some Gorilla Glue to reinforce it. As you can see, the grains are running long ways instead of like that. Now that it's all glued up, we're gonna shape it up with the files and probably a hammer and chisel a little bit too. And after a little bit of thought, I I've realized that I probably need to put some oak right here too. If you just cut this initial piece with the grains long ways the first time, you won't have to deal with any of this. Don't make the mistake I made. So I had to file down on the gun part a little bit more to widen that to accommodate all of the new reinforcement things that I put on it, but now that I did that, it looks pretty freaking cool, I think. Now I'll use some Gorilla Glue to attach this thing to this thing, cause it's not 
attached. Say it with me, but Tris. Just cut them out of that three quarter inch oak that we used for uh, this thing. And here I put some rubber bands in an X formation to clamp the buttresses to it while the glue dries. Next, we're gonna draw this shape out on paper and cut it out. This line is two inches. This line is three quarters of an inch. This line right here is an inch and a half. And this one is one inch. Once you get it cut out, put it onto some 22 gauge steel, trace it out and cut it out with either a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel or an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Then once you got them cut out, bend them on the two inch long lines. Then you can stick it onto a piece of that three quarter inch oak and drill through there all the way to the other side and pops out there and then drill two on the back of it too. Now I made some fiberglass limbs for the crossbow by just taking some fiberglass mat and laying it on a piece of steel. This is, I think this is just a housing from a VCR or something and I just cut the steel and gave it a little bend right there and then I uh, did the regular fiberglassing procedure and then I pulled it off I cut it down the middle and now I've got two limbs for the crossbow you can add more or less to give it more or less strength but I just use five because this is an experiment basically both of the limbs are two inches wide 19 inches long and it's five layers of fiberglass mat now drill through and use some bolts to attach the bracket you just made to the fiberglass limb. Then once it's bolted on, I'm gonna cut off the corners just to make it look a little bit better. Now I clamp the other end of the limbs to the crossbow body thing to make sure they're both lined up perfectly. And then I'm gonna drill through right there and put a bolt through it. Then remove the clamp and drill through where it's clamped right now and put a bolt through that. And now here's how we're going to attach the pulley wheels to the bracket. First, put a lock washer on your bolt. Put it into the hole that you drilled. Put a nut on the end of the bolt. Put the wheel on top of the nut. And then from there, you just kind of hold it down and then screw it the rest of the way in until it comes out the other side. Screw the bolt in until the lock washer is flat and there you go, it's free spinning. You don't even have to put a nut on the other side. I'm gonna have to file this part down a little bit because I didn't notice that it would touch the string once I cocked it. But yeah, aside from that and something else, it's pretty good. The other thing that's wrong with it, I guess, I've never made limbs out of fiberglass before, so I had no idea how much to use, and I ended up really underestimating how much I needed, so five layers of fiberglass is really not that powerful. So while this does look really cool, it's not doing much damage right now. So I'm gonna pop these limbs off, figure out a way to reinforce them, and then I'll get back to you. So here's the original thickness of it with five layers of fiberglass mat, and here's the new thickness of it after I've added about eight more more layers to it and then I sanded it down and rounded it out so now you can touch it and it also makes it so that it's a manageable weight so you can still draw it back but this was more the strength that I was going for so yeah if you want to make this thing I would say 10 to 13 layers of fiberglass mat would be good and I did say this thing was gonna be pretty so right now I'm staining it with some 231 gun stock wood finish and I'm gonna be painting the limbs black and the trigger too I think and here's how you string the bow once you put the limbs back on first you flip it over, pick a bolt, make a loop with your paracord, put it over the bolt, come around to this side, make it go around the opposite wheel and come out under, then you cross over the top of the gun looking part of the crossbow, and go under that wheel, come out from over, come across again, and then hook it onto the other bolt. And make sure there's a decent amount of tension when you do it. The string stops are really as simple as they look. It's just two more pieces of oak and I bolted it on with a 3 8 inch bolt and a couple of washers and obviously a nut on the other end of it. And the spring on the back of it is just some regular 18 gauge steel. It's not spring steel or anything. It doesn't really have to be. I just bolted it on there after I cut it out and then bent it into shape. Here's how it is uncocked. Here's how it is cocked. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth explanation as to why it's a home defense crossbow specifically, or if you want to see it shoot, go ahead and watch the demonstration video by clicking on the link right here. But that's all I got for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Even though it was pretty stressful, I did enjoy making it a lot, and I think you guys will too, so uh, give it a shot if you know what I'm saying. Thanks guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.